What is happening everyone? This is Jim from JCRC uh, revamping the Amphibious WL Toys. Gonna uh, do some changes on it. I think it's I think this is technically revamp number four. Uh, first time was making it making it amphibious. And then the second time would be uh, switching out the radio gear, the stock radio gear um, for my own combination of stuff. And then the uh, third, I guess, would be putting the RC four-wheel drive 6x6 rear axle on it with the boat prop. And now the final, the final upgrade. Um, it just came to me today, and uh, maybe I'm a little slow on the uptake for it, but I'm going to add a bunch of foam to the bottom of this try to get it to the point where the tires are just barely sitting in the water just the bottom just the bottom edge of the tire is what I want sitting in the water so I think I can put like three layers of foam in here maybe three layers on the front and then a fourth layer in between um, going to the back so it sits a little bit more level and I might make it a little bit wider on the sides um, you know, maybe a couple layers of foam coming out and uh, bent upward, you know, kind of bent on a curve. Uh, and then I think I'm going to put my transmission uh, from low range into high range and try to lock it into high range. Um, hopefully I can do that without taking apart the transmission, but I might have to take apart the transmission. So we're going to start off by taking off the wheels here. And I take that back. I'm not going to take the wheels off just yet. I'm going to need the wheels on there so I can measure out uh, the, correct, the correct width of foam for up front by the A-arms. And uh, for how far back I want to take it back here when it comes back to the tires. I think I want to take it all the way back. All the way back to the back here right across the axle I don't know if the props even gonna be hitting the water anymore but I'm still gonna leave it on there and uh, maybe make a little hole a little cut out hole for it or something I don't know um, hmm maybe I can uh, I'm gonna put a solid piece piece of foam across the bottom across the bottom of here maybe if I cut a little inlet on the bottom of the foam so water could get in this way and then uh, fold some foam around fold some foam around the back of the axle and leave a gap for the prop to stick through and wrap it up this way. So as it's moving forward across the water, maybe water would be getting rammed into the you know between the trailing arms and the drive shaft and force past the drive shaft or force past the propeller. I don't know. But like I said, the idea is I want it to sit like this in the water with just that much of the tire in the water on all four corners. That's my plan. And I plan on locking this baby in second gear, curving up the sides on the foam, just so in case I start getting sideways across the water, it's going to be, uh, you know, not as likely to catch and flip over. So it's already pretty light right now. I'm pretty buoyant. So we're just going to glue on a few more layers. So uh, bear with me here. I'm going to flip this guy upside down and trace out this pattern. All right. Well, I put one single layer of foam down the middle. Um, it doesn't come back quite as far as I want it. But I guess for the first layer of foam, it won't be too bad if I'm going to try to maybe possibly do some kind of uh, water ram thing towards the uh, propeller. It's going to be good enough that I can trace out the basic design that I need um, for where I need to cut out um, for, you know, to have clearance for the front tires for turning. And uh, to try to get my correct width back here as well. So I guess this is a good, uh, a good place to start, but it needs to be a little bit longer. I made it long enough that I can wrap it around to the front bumper so I can zip tie it to the front bumper, uh, but most of this stuff right in here is going to have to get trimmed off. 
just to allow for the tires to turn. So stay tuned real quick here. I'm going to trace this out and use this for a main template for tracing out the rest of my stuff. Alrighty, so while it was sitting like this, I took a Sharpie and it's kind of basically traced out the entire chassis and belly pan. Um, you're not going to be able to see it under here probably, but right along in here and somewhat traced out the A-arms. Same on the front. Traced out where the A-arm is from the edge of the tire. Sorry, from in here from the edge, edge of the tire. And then brought it back on an angle to allow the tires to turn. Uh, so it's going to be slightly fatter on the inside and then uh, taper in as it goes. And that's going to mimic the front here around the bumper. So this is my basic template. I also made some marks on the back here where I need to cut out to allow clearance for the back tires. And I plan on making this wider across here, across the bottom, on either side. Probably bring it out to about here maybe. Trying to find another piece of foam just for demonstration purposes. I guess this isn't uh, isn't quite going to be the jab. But maybe bring the foam out like this, possibly even a little bit wider, and bend it up a little bit. But that's going to be on this side of it. And then it's all going to be kind of like one one big piece. And then I don't know, maybe cut a little opening here in the bottom to push water down towards that prop. Not too sure. We'll see here. I'm going to start making these little basic cuts here and whatever I got to do on the front. And then uh, we'll be right back. All right. Well, we got the uh, we got the basic first layer cut. These little ends will be folded over like, like so. And that will allow full tire clearance from left to right. And still give me as much flotation as I can across the front here. The back has just been notched out for the tires on either side. Uh, so this is our first layer. I need to get a fatter piece of foam for the next one. And here we go. I have a basic, uh, well, not too perfect little drawing cut out where I need to remove material. Taped one piece over the other. Went with my normal standard me method of uh, measure once, cut 10 times. And uh, I basically just eyeballed everything. So I'm going to cut this piece out. This is three layers of foam thick. This actually, what did this come off of? I believe this came from my trail finder, from my trail finder too, when I bought it. Um, this layer of foam was in the package. And it's the same style foam as this life vest foam, except it's three layers thick. So, uh, or maybe four layers. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. It might be five layers, but maybe a... Uh, not quite as thick. I'll try to count the lines here. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's five, five layers there. So let me cut this out and uh, see what it looks like as far as how much ground clearance we have. Well, it's pretty ugly, but uh, it's somewhat cut out. Well, it's been a little while here, guys, and we are making some progress. Making a mess of foam here. 
I cut a little air inlet on this side, tapered it off on the back side. Little section right here for the prop to stick out on the back of the axle. Kind of cut it on an angle on the sides and up around the top here and on the bottom. I still got to center this up a little bit, maybe probably make this little uh, inlet hole a little bit larger. This is going to wrap around the back of the axle, kind of like so. So hopefully that helps uh, when it's sitting in the water. Moving forward, hopefully water is going to get pushed through here and out towards the prop. Kind of ramming it out towards the prop like a jet. I don't even know if you guys can see this. I'm holding the camera up too high. So hopefully the water is going to come in here and exit out here. I'm going to keep all this stuff pretty tight inside the chassis. There's not going to be much suspension movement. And I am sorry for the camera angles here. I should mention that I have a new phone too. This is a brand new phone. My other phone locked up on me. So, uh, that was a couple days ago. So we're now filming in 1080p with like a 13 or 14 megapixel megapixel phone or whatever. So regardless, getting a little bit closer. I guess ultimately what I need to do right now is to uh, start gluing this whole portion right here down to the chassis and uh, start getting that set in place and glued and then I can do my final shaping back here for the prop inlet and for the exit that's going to wrap around the back axle. So, uh, and I still, I'm still going to put another top sheet of foam over top of this to try to curve these edges down a little bit bigger or a little bit more. I've got one large square piece right here. So I'm going to try to, you know, get something wrapping over the, wrapping over the edge there to kind of give it a smooth surface. So a couple minutes here, guys, I'm going to start doing some gluing. Oops, I messed up, guys. I started gluing this thing down just now and I remembered that I want to put this truck in high range. So in order to put it into high range, I got to take the top off of it and I need to access the screws right here. So I'm going to have to pull this thing off, set it off to the side and uh, lock this baby into high range real quick. And voila, top is open. I need to get in here and uh, shift this baby into high. I'm also going to take out this two cell lipo that I'm running in here. I currently have a two cell 5700 milliamp um, lipo and I'm going to put in a three cell 2200 milliamp uh, that's already plastic dipped and ready to go. I'm going to put that in for this next run. Um, I never ran a three cell before. I don't know if it's going to be any faster or not, but uh, we shall see. So I need to take out some of this foam and get this guy uh, locked in the low or locked in the high range. All right, and we are back. Access to the uh, shift linkage here. I've got a little piece of rubber hose jammed in between it right here, pushing it back in the low range. So I need to take that off and move this thing forward. I don't know what I'm going to do to put this in the high range or to, to, to hold this forward in the high range. I really don't feel like taking apart this whole transmission. Um, so we'll see what I come up with for this guy. Right, right at the moment, I'm going to take this little nut off on the back, pull this linkage off, and uh, pull out that little rubber hose. Uh, put everything back together, push it forward. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to hold it in there. We'll find out when I come back. All right, guys. <laughs> Promise not to laugh. 
Uh, here we go. I've got three small white nylon straps or zip ties going around the tra transmission shifter there, and uh, it goes underneath my winch plate here that I have the speed controller mounted on. And then it goes all the way around the back edge here behind the speed controller and back around. And then I took another small zip tie and I wrapped it around the shift linkage itself holding this one down on it. So the three set or the, the set of three is pushing or pulling the uh, shift lever in or the shift linkage in or holding it in the high range. And this little one right down there is holding that, holding that other one in place. So, yep, there we go. Locked in high. And we are getting closer. Got the speed controller back in there. Starting to put some foam back in there. Just took the Onyx 2 cell 5700 milliamp battery out. And I'm putting in the Gen Zace 3 cell. 2200 milliamp, also heavily, heavily plastic dipped. I never ran on three cell once again, so I don't know, uh, don't know what kind of expectations they have, but uh, I don't know. We'll find out. Alrighty, we got this part all put back together again. Body's back on it, or the chassis back on it, I guess, or roll cage or whatever. Um, I'm going to glue that bottom piece of foam on and I'm going to leave the body off it for the minute until, oops, until I can figure out exactly how I want to wrap that big chunk of foam, this guy right here, how I want to wrap that back half around the axle. And I might want to put another piece of foam in under here maybe to kind of direct the water back towards the prop. I'm not too sure. So uh, let me do some thinking here, and we'll be right back. All right, and we are back. It is 11.04 p.m. or a.m. No, p.m. Um, got some stuff gluing here, a bunch of stuff zip-tied down, a little piece of foam right here going over top of the trailing arms, uh, the upper trailing arms, and then zip-tied around the lower trailing arms. I'm currently gluing this little black or back tab right here along this black uh, pipe foam with some hair rubber bands. I'm trying to keep those in check. Um, Anthony from Triple X Garage mentioned, mentioned using hair hair ties for uh, doing stuff or holding stuff down. I think he was holding down scale items, but I'm holding down parts to dry. All right, so we got a med medley of zip ties here. Uh, first, this top layer of foam is zip tied around the lower trailing arm, um, right here and right here. And then the lower layer here, the thicker layer, that is uh, double zip tied um, around the whole unit. So it goes right through the same holes that the first ones went through, all the way down and around and, and back up on both places. Um, the idea there was I was I'm trying to make a little cavity in between the trailing arms and all that to funnel water uh, towards the prop. Got the uh, belly pan gluing currently. I still have to glue this front piece down, and uh, it does have a curve to it, so it's going to have like a little bit of a uh, it's going to ride kind of like a jet ski a little bit. I cut all this stuff right here. I'm trying to hold on to this here so I don't have a wipeout. I cut all this on an angle with a razor blade or with an exact zero knife or exacto knife. Um, so on the flat side coming in, there's an angle like this. Um, see the angle right there going up in? And then on the bottom edge, I reverse the angle, it's uh, sloping inward. So trying to keep a little, trying to create a little pocket there. I don't know if that's going to do anything. That actually might create harm. It might actually slow this thing down.
or maybe not even or maybe not even come into play at all. Um, after this upper section dries, I'm going to wrap this around and glue it like this, and then uh, continue to shape these a little bit more. Uh, so I can try to funnel a little bit more water through as well as shaping this top half as best I can around the prop. I still want to put one more big piece of foam right there across the bottom um, just to get a little bit more length out of a total or a little bit more width out of it as well. Right now it's going to be eh, a little over an inch wider than it was before as far as the overall platform in the water. About the middle of the tire on, on each side versus uh, being over here where it was before. And I'm going to add another piece of foam and I don't know. I'm going to try to get it out a little bit wider than that. And I also have... Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let me dig through my stuff here. So I got a, that boogie board laying here still. I got two couple for sale signs here. When I bought my Jeep. And uh, they're pretty smooth on the bottom. I'm thinking about uh, using these for the final bottom panel over top of all, over top of all the foam. Just so it has this nice... Uh, glassy surface to slide on versus the uh, somewhat corrugated surface of the foam. So um, I'm getting late on my minutes here. I'm at 21 minutes. So I'm going to pause it right here and uh, pick up here in a couple minutes. And we are back and it is 2.37 in the morning. Longest part about this build is just waiting for the glue to dry. Waiting for glue. Um, I took another piece of uh, foam and wrapped it around the entire chassis and uh, around this piece of foam this other big uh, thick piece of foam here put another piece across the top wrapped it around you have a couple hair rubber bands holding it in place it's also screwed in with the body on either side that's currently still drying um, Put a little filler piece in here to fill up this gap. Um, cut it on it, shaved it down on an angle so it's got a nice little smooth ramp on it. Just added another little filler piece right back here that you can't see, but there's a big seam right here. That's another little filler piece that I added. Got our intake here, cut on an angle, going in. Real smooth all the way down through there. I'm at 23 minutes. I was gonna float test float test this thing too. Yeah, pretty smooth all the way through there, so it's a nice little shoot going back to the motor. And we are back. It is 4:30 in the morning on Sunday morning. She is all revamped again. Pile of stuff right there. All trash foam. Leftovers. Little side view. Shot at the back. Another side view. Try and do this quick because I'm running out of time here. Uh, there's the underside with the little portal portal hole going to the uh, prop. And all tunneled out on the inside as well. And this last little bit of shiny black that you see on the bottom of the car, that is two plastic for sale signs that I glued together and then glued down over top of the uh, over top of the styrofoam just to give it a little bit of a slick surface there. 
So a bunch of wet paint. So I'm not gonna float test it tonight. But tomorrow, I'm taking that guy back out to the lake. So just to recap, just to recap, she is uh, locked in high gear. And um, well, what you see is what you get. Uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, this is Jim from JCRC. Click like and subscribe, share with your friends. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks again.